friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are watching this on Wedding Chicks or over on Facebook, thank you so much for stopping by. Well, obviously today is slightly different because I'm in the car on my way to a walkthrough. The first time you go to a venue, it can be really daunting because there are so many elements that go into selecting a place and there are so many differences between each venue. So I thought it'd be a good idea to come up with 20 questions that you should be asking at a, a venue walkthrough. These questions are divided into three categories. One's pertaining to the contract, one's pertaining to the logistics of the event, and one's pertaining to rentals um, and vendors. So without further ado, let's jump into the questions. Contract questions. Question number one, how many hours are included in the actual rental? This is a general rule of thumb. It takes about two hours for setup and about one hour for teardown. Question number two, will there be venue staff on site throughout the entirety of the event? You would think that this would be an automatic yes, but that's not always the case. So it's important to figure out if there will be a venue manager or coordinator or a site manager. Um, they all have slightly different names, but basically the same role. So that's in case a breaker gets tripped or sprinklers go off, which I've never seen happen, so don't panic, but someone who knows the venue well enough to help with anything that may arise. Question number three, rehearsal. Can you have it on site? This is a given with a lot of venues, but some venues will not allow you to have a rehearsal because likely they will have another event happening the day before. Also included in that is rehearsal dinner. Can you have a rehearsal dinner on site? Again, and sometimes they charge extra or sometimes they only allow for you to do a rehearsal but not have the actual meal there. Question number four, noise ordinances. This applies to most events that are happening outside. I know here in the state of California, most venues require that all amplified music be finished by 10 p.m. Question number five, liability insurance. Who's required to have it? Most often it's in the amount of $1 million, which sounds really scary, but it's very easy for vendors to procure it. And most often that's required by vendors that will be present throughout the entirety of the event. So your florist will not need to have it because she or he is likely just dropping the flowers and then leaving. But Vendors like your coordinator, your photographer, your videographer, and your photo booth, and your caterers may be required to carry it. Question number six, security. Is there some provided? Is there some required? I always think it's a good idea, especially when alcohol is involved, to have some sort of security personnel around, just in case things get out of hand. Very rarely is it required, but it's a good idea to have. The second area of questions that we're gonna be asking about are logistics. So question number seven, loading zone and parking. More often than not, this tends to not be an issue because the venue isn't surrounded by a lot of places um, that would inhibit loading or parking for vendors and or guests. But sometimes in places like big cities, for us that would be downtown LA or downtown San Diego, it can be really difficult to find parking. So it's important to ask where is parking located? And for vendors who are unloading supplies, where can they park to unload all of those items? Sometimes it's quite a distance from the loading zone to where the actual event is taking place, so it's always helpful to let your vendors know if they're not gonna be really close. Also, is there ample parking for the amount of guests that you're gonna invite? Usually it would require one car for every two guests. And worst case scenario, can you leave vehicles there overnight? Question number eight, disability access. So this is for anyone who might be using a walker or have trouble walking or may happen to be in a wheelchair. You're gonna wanna make sure that they have good, easy access to the ceremony and reception spaces. Make sure the restrooms are accessible to everyone and within a close enough distance that no one has to walk a mile to go to the bathroom because that would suck. Question number nine, seasonal concerns. This applies to basically every single season. Will there be a coat check available during the colder months? and space heaters if you need them, especially if you're outside? Do they provide a rain contingency plan or is that something that you'll need to supply yourself? Tents can be extremely expensive to rent and they also require a very high deposit. So it's good to know what your options are before you have to put down $2,500 on a tent rental deposit that you may or may not need. Question 10, getting ready rooms. So that's the bride's room and the groom's room. Are there options available on site? Some have them, some don't. If so, is that included in your previously allotted rental time or do you need to add on extra time to make sure you have plenty of time? to get ready. While you're there, if they do have those rooms available, be sure to take a look at them because they may or may not have things that you think are necessary. Large mirrors for the girls to get ready, plenty of power outlets. Is there air conditioning? Because if not, you're gonna wanna bring some fans in. It gets hot when you're getting ready, like really hot. Question 11, lighting. As you're walking throughout the space, most likely it'll be during the daytime. So sometimes you don't think through what things will look like at night, but 
I've worked events where there has been absolutely no lighting in the area that has been deemed the food prep area or the catering area or the photo booth area. Look for overhead and up lighting throughout the entirety of the space to make sure that every element of your event is well lit when night falls. Question number 12 electricity. Find out where all of the outlets are. With so many different vendors drawing so much power, and that could be catering, that could be photo booth, um, that's your DJ. If they need a large source of power, they're going to need to know where they can set up camp. They're also going to want to make sure all of that power is evenly distributed, so not everyone is using the same outlet, because that's going to lead to a blackout real fast. If you all of a sudden lose power to one section of the reception space, will there be someone on site to help you fix that? Number 13, we kind of touched on this, where are the restrooms located? If it's a long hike between either the ceremony space or the reception space to get to the restrooms, you may need to consider bringing in additional trailer restrooms, which there are some really cool ones out there. So it's not always gross to look at. Usually it's one bathroom for every 30 to 50 guests. So if there's only one bathroom and you have 150 people, you're going to want to bring in some extras because that's absolutely not going to be enough for you guys. Number 14, what's their standard layout? Where do they typically hold the ceremony, the cocktail hour, and the reception? Within those spaces, how do they typically angle the chairs and where do they put the tables? What's a good spot for the photo booth? What's their usual spot for the DJ? Asking these questions can help you to better plan out Asking these questions can help you to better plan out the event flow for your particular event and where everything will be going for you. Number 15, how many events do you have on site per day? Most of the time it's just yours, but some places actually have multiple sites on their property so they can host multiple events. While that's great for them, that could be a serious downfall for you guys if parking becomes a concern or restrooms become a concern or if you need the venue manager's assistance and they are working with another event. Question 16, tear down. Who does what? Does the venue provide any sort of teardown at all? Some of them do not remove trash. So you may need to assign trash duty to one of your vendors, your caterer. If the venue provides the tables and chairs, likely they will tear those down as well. If not, you're gonna need to outsource to the rental company to do that for you. And the third section we're gonna be discussing is vendors and rentals. Question 17, catering. Is there catering offered on site? If not, are you allowed to bring in whatever caterer you want? Or you have to choose from um, a set list of preferred vendors. Can any cooking be allowed on site? Do they have a prep space? Do they have a kitchen? Or do you need to provide one for your caterer to use? Because that gets real expensive real fast. Is there a room with a sink? Is there a refrigerator that you have access to? Question 18, alcohol restrictions. A lot of venues will allow you to have a completely open bar and some venues will not. Some venues will say you cannot have kegs and you can't have hard alcohol, but you can do beer and wine only. This could seriously sway your decision on picking which venue you wanna go with if you're really interested in having a full bar. Occasionally, there will be something called a corkage fee where they charge a small fee for every bottle that's open or for every guest that's there. Question 19, decoration restrictions. Can you hang anything? If so, what medium can you use to hang those items? Can you use tape? or can you drill into the walls? That's really uncommon, but sometimes you'll find a place that's like, yeah, drill into the walls, it's totally fine. Or you'll find some places that say basically, don't attach anything in any way that could harm any portion of the venue. So that's no tape, that's no glue, no nails, nothing. Though, so if you do need to attach anything, Think about using zip ties or twine or string. Occasionally there are liability issues when it comes to having people on a ladder. So if you want to hang stuff, ask them about ladder liability. I don't think that's like the exact term for it, but they'll understand what you're saying. Hey, if we want to hang stuff, are we allowed to? Another decoration restriction could be rose petals. They may allow you to use them for your event or they may not allow you to use them. In addition to that, someone needs to sweep those up. Sometimes the venue will take care of that and sometimes they won't, and that will usually fall on your coordinator or your florist if they're staying. And grand exit. Can you use sparklers? Can you use confetti? Can you use bubbles? Some places are all open to it. Some places say no sparklers, no confetti. Sparklers are a fire hazard. Confetti makes a big mess, um, but bubbles may potentially be okay. And then there are some places that say, no, 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 bubbles are a slip hazard. We can't have that. So let them know of your grand exit plans and see if they allow those things to happen at their venue. And question number 20, what rentals come with this site? Chairs, tables, linens, napkins, china, flatware. Some venues provide chairs, but they are ugly. They're not good to look at and they're not comfortable to sit in. So if they do provide those, sit in them, take a look at them really try to envision them as a part of your design. They offer tables, what are the sizes that they offer? Last but not least, speakers or AV equipment. 
Sometimes there are house speakers that are available for use, which is wonderful because that means your DJ can just pipe into the house speakers and you won't need to bring a whole set for each and every single area of your event. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you found this video helpful, scoot on in there and like it. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. As always, a huge shout out to my gal pals over at Wedding Chicks for hosting this video. Until next time, bye guys.